Okay, here's required practical determination of G, gravitational field strength, or acceleration due to gravity, also has another name, via free fall method. Okay, so we're trying to find G. All we're gonna do is drop a piece of card through a light gate. Okay, so here's my setup. I have a meter rule, I have a piece of card, I have a light gate, and I have a data logger that the light gate is plugged into. Now again, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, you can use data loggers that have two light gates attached, but the problem with that is that it will do all the calculations for you, and so that sort of negates the whole experiment. So we're just gonna have one light gate. Let's have a think about SUVAT real quick. We're obviously trying to find A, acceleration. That's our G, isn't it? If we're dropping it, then we know that U is zero. We can know S because we can see how far it's dropped from where we drop it to where it goes through the light gate. So that's fine. And from the light gate, we can find out the final speed. So we're not concerned about T. We want an equation that has no T in it. That is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Because U is zero, U squared disappears. So it's just V squared equals 2AS. I'm gonna change the A to a G. So while this seems like a fairly simple experiment, and it is, there's lots and lots of things to think about when it comes to talking about accuracy and sources of uncertainty. So first thing we wanna do is cut a rectangular piece of card, and we want to measure the length of that, that is the length that it's actually going to be falling through with, and we can do that with a one millimeter resolution ruler. Could use a vernier caliper, not much point, we don't need to go to that level of precision. Then what we need to do is measure the distance from the starting position to the light gate, and we're gonna be using a meter rule for that, obviously. And uh, we want it to a one millimeter resolution. Could be one centimeters. Now I want to avoid parallax error by having the ruler clamped close to the light gate. And we could also use set square. So we could have a set square coming off the ruler like that. So we can line up our card more accurately. Could use set square to get more accurate starting points. Now here's the problem. Which part of the card do you line up with your ruler? Is it the top of the card that you line up there? Is it the bottom of the card? So you have it like that starting. What do we do? Well, we have to ask the question, at what point on the card going through the light gate is the velocity that it records correct? The problem is that the card is still accelerating as it goes through the light gate. Because of that, there is an uncertainty in the distance in S. So you could use the top of the card, okay. You could use the bottom of the card, okay, if you're consistent, but it's probably best to go for the midpoint of the card. Instead, use middle of card as reference point. And therefore we can say that the uncertainty in S is going to be half the length of the card because we're sure that the velocity is gonna be right at some point between it entering and exiting the light gate. Now we wanna make sure that it drops nice and straight as well. We don't want it falling all skewiff as it goes through the light gate. So we're going to weigh card down with blue tack or similar to make bottom heavy. Now there's a couple of things that that does. Like we said, it ensures goes through straight because if it falls diagonally, then the length of card that you put into your light gate isn't gonna be correct. Also, it mitigates or reduces the effect of drag, air resistance. Because if a car's really, really light, then it could actually reach terminal velocity or the acceleration could reduce anyway. Avoids G decreasing. When I say G, I mean the actual acceleration, not acceleration due to gravity, obviously. So that's how we, so that's one way that we can obtain accurate readings. What else? Well, we're gonna drop from say 20 centimeters up to 100 centimeters. Why not higher than 100 centimeters? Difficult to hit light gates or go through light gates above this. And we can go up in 20 centimeter increments. We're gonna repeat it three times for each S and we're gonna obtain V and then we're gonna calculate a mean average. Now, because we are doing an average from three readings, that means that there is inevitably gonna be an uncertainty in this as well. Uncertainty in the average is gonna be half the range of results. So that's gonna be what we plot on our graph if we wanna do line of worst fit, line of best fit. So we have our values for V squared and S. We can't plot a graph of V against S because V isn't proportional to S, it's V squared that's proportional to S, so there we go. 
get a nice straight line. The gradient of this is going to be equal to, well, if I rearrange this, v squared over s, that gives us 2g. Therefore, g should be our gradient divided by 2. So you should end up with a gradient of something like 20, and then divide by 2 to get about 9.8. Obviously, we can plot error bars on our graph. What are we going to plot on there? Well, we said that the uncertainty in v, we want to turn that into a percentage uncertainty in v, double to get our percentage uncertainty in v squared. And then finally, we turn that back into an absolute uncertainty, just your normal uncertainty in v squared and then that's what we're going to plot then we can do line of worst fit so we can say uncertainty and gradient is equal to line of worst fit take away line of best fit divided by line of best fit times 100 and then because we have an uncertainty in our gradient we're just divided by two that's going to be the same as the percentage uncertainty in g so there you go that's how you do the free fall experiment Hope you found that helpful. If you did, leave a like. Don't forget to hit that bell button so you could see when I make a new video. And I've actually done this experiment in real life as well. Click the card and it'll take you to the video that I made for Marsbury Science. And if you think something could be done better here, then please put it in the comment down below. Really appreciate you guys' feedback. And I'll see you all next time.